this is Gene Thorpe, Little Red Rooster TV. Do you know that uh, as of today, we have uh, 484 subscribers. So that means we're only 16 subscribers shy of 500 subscribers. So what I would like to ask each and every one of you to do is reach up and subscribe to our channel hit the bell so you'd be notified when we have a new video or not because you know what just keep checking in with us we need the subscriptions because actually right now we're growing like crazy as far as the amount of hours that we're being watched and viewed so thank you very much for that and today what i'm going to talk about are the essentials of learning to play the guitar from my perspective and uh, you know, it's an interesting thing. This guitar that I'm picking up is a Washburn guitar. And I don't know if it's made in Korea or some other very small Indonesia. I don't know where it's made. But man, I will tell you one thing. That when I plug this in and play it, I hadn't played it for probably a month and a half or two months. And this thing was so close to being in tune that I just couldn't believe it. And the tones of this guitar are incredible. But here's what I recommend that you do, is find a guitar that you like. And I know I've said this before, but here's what, you know, what I did when I first uh, decided that I wanted to play the guitar. I'd already been in the music, I'd already been a drummer. I'm gonna sit down because one of the things I'm gonna demonstrate today is how to hold the guitar. But as I talk about you know, I, I like to reverse engineer things. So I think it's really important to ask yourself, why do I want to play the guitar? Now, we did talk in one of our uh, videos about choosing an instrument, and I love the guitar because it's portable. You can sing to it, you can play bass, you can play rhythm guitar, you can play lead all on the same instrument, and sometimes even at the same time. And so, Here's my thing. Uh, back when I very first started, <clears throat> I remember hearing these old country bands, and I loved hearing the cymbals of a drum set, and I loved hearing the twang of a guitar. And it never really occurred to me that I was ever going to uh, play a guitar because I wanted to sing. And once I learned how to play the drums and had fiddled with the guitar a little bit and fiddled with the keyboards a little bit, I decided that really what I wanted to do was sing. So my motivation to play the guitar then was so I could support myself in learning to sing. In other words, I could go along with the chords and that type of thing. I think back in the very first days of music for me, uh, growing up in the 50s, you know, I, I've told people before my first concert was Fats Domino. Can you uh, believe that? And I loved Elvis and I loved Hank Williams and all of those kind of people who were really singers. And, for example, Hank Williams, we, we talk about singer-songwriters, he was the very first that I knew of, of a, well, actually not true, but on a, a major scale like that, singer-songwriter that could play the guitar and sing all of his own songs. Now, he, he wasn't really a lead guitarist, but he definitely could self-sustain himself you know, go out and play a gig with just his guitar. So you gotta figure out why do you wanna play the guitar. Then people start playing the guitar and many times they stop. So what I'm trying to let a person know about it is that if you become familiar with one, pick one out that for whatever reason you like it, you feel comfortable. Like this is a 335 type guitar. In other words, Gibson made a guitar like this. It's called the 335. And it's a larger size body. So it's really kind of comfortable to put your arm on. This part right here can sit over your leg. And so it's really interesting. I like having it straight out where I'm sitting down. Some people go like this, some people go like that. But you just gotta ergonomically figure out what you like. And then the very first thing that I think a person needs to do at that point is start thinking about playing chords. And chords are basically, well, they're the basis of all songs. So if you start learning some of the basic uh, chords on the guitar, open chords we call them, might be G, C, D, A, that's the 
this in A7th A. Um, I think I said E, but E. And then what happens is when you realize that these chords can be moved up and down the scale, you're going to be practicing. So there are different elements of practicing. A lot of times if a person were just to pick up a guitar and noodle and do the same little things that they do, they're going to probably be okay to play, but I always think everything should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if you're going to learn a, a, a song or anything like that, you want to think it through. So I would say, why don't you think in terms of who are your favorite artists, and then listen to the music of it. Uh, and with the internet, with YouTube, it is so easy to be able to learn the chords I think it's very important to probably for anybody uh, that wants to sing to be able to pick up a very inexpensive Casio keyboard or whatever but when you have the guitar there are things that you're going to be doing you're going to be strumming once you know these basic chords and I was just watching a, a video by Rick Beato he's very good and he's talking about going back and forth with your strumming to get your rhythm so strumming is one of the parts uh, that, that are really important and when you make your chords, certain chords you can wrap your thumb around and other chords in order to play them correctly and make them hold, you probably want to put your thumb on the back of the guitar. So I would say the next thing that's very important is picking, picking the guitar. So when you pick the guitar, what's going to happen is by doing little exercises like what I was doing right there is a little chromatic scale, but what that does is starts teaching muscle memory. So does playing the chords. So when you play uh, the chords to a song and you are having a problem, let's say going from an A to a D, what you would probably want to do, or I would definitely recommend, is play that A to where that it is clear you can hear all the notes that you want to hit. And a very important thing is muting. If you look right here with my thumb, I'm really muting the, the E string, and I'm not hitting the little E string either. So when I'm playing this chord, this A, I'm trying to hit the notes in the triad. And then if I were going to change to a D, if you look real closely, it might take a little bit of time mechanically. And so what I'm doing is I'm practicing going back and forth between the two different chords. And then if I employ the strumming into it, I can go like that. And you can get it to where you can go this quickly, or quickly, you know, even quicker. And those types of things will build the muscle memory. So uh, I think it's very important that we then probably go into learning scales. If you learn those, and you can do them backwards and forwards, and learn arpeggios and things like that, you'll rapidly be able to learn the guitar. So this is Gene Thorpe, Little Red Rooster TV, playing the guitar. All right, see you later.